Hello, Evan. What is Raspberry Pi? Can you please explain it in lay terms? Raspberry Pi is a $25, $35, depending on the version, uh, credit, size, credit card sized Linux PC uh, that we built uh, primarily for the education market, but we we're seeing a lot of interest uh, from the, both the hobbyist market uh, and also from the uh, developing world. And what does it cost? Uh, so it costs, uh, we have two versions. We have a version without networking and with a single USB connection, uh, and that costs $25. Uh, and that's due to launch in the next couple of months. And then the version which is currently shipping is the more expensive and deluxe version uh, that has a, a wired Ethernet connection uh, and two USB um, uh, sockets, and that, um, that costs 35 US dollars. Does it build on the Acorn computer's legacy? Were you influenced by BBC Micro? Absolutely. So my first machine when I was a child was a BBC Micro. Uh, so in that respect, I think you know, many of the people involved in this have been influenced uh, by Acorn in the sense that we wouldn't be computer programmers if it wasn't for that. Um, we're more directly influenced by Acorn as well in that uh, this, the processor used in the, um, the SOC, the processor used in the chip uh, on, this, uh, on, the, on this board is an ARM processor and of course ARM are the, uh, the eventual descendants of, uh, of Acorn. Can you tell us about the media frenzy following its launch, and did you anticipate that? Uh, I don't think we'd anticipated the, the level of interest and the level of demand that we were going to experience. Um, I think when we first started doing this, we thought we might make a thousand units, maybe, and we might get it in the local press. Uh, uh, obviously, there's been not just a, a national UK, but an international and global media um, uh, level of interest in this, which is beyond anything that we could have imagined. Can you tell me where your biggest global audience is? Today our biggest global audience is uh, still the UK, I think. Um, the, uh, if you look at the statistics, obviously you see a lot of, a lot of people in the, in the United States, because there are a lot of people in the United States, uh, but I think the level of media interest in the UK has exceeded the media interest elsewhere. Uh, going forward, we expect that um, this device uh, is going to see a lot of use in, um, in the BRIC countries. Uh, we've had a vast amount of interest from Brazil and from Russia already. Uh, a little less from India and a little less than that from China. But over time, you know, we think there's a real market for this sort of product uh, as a, just as a general purpose productivity computer in these countries. So are you going to be able to keep up with demand? How many units have you sold so far and what is the waiting list? So the, uh, I believe the backlog is in the many, many tens of thousands of units. Um, obviously, we um, have both our partners, so these are, these are manufactured and distributed for us by um, uh, Premier Farnell and Model 14 Premier Farnell and RS Components. Um, they, they both have substantial backlogs and they're working extremely hard to fill those. Uh, I think going forward it is, going to be, it is going to be possible, these are relatively simple devices to build, uh, so it is going to be possible to both to catch up with that backlog and then to deal with future demand. And what unexpected hitches have you experienced following your launch? So I guess the, the two things in the past, the two things in the past month have been, um, so I think it's about six weeks since we opened for pre-orders. Uh, in that time, we've had an issue with, um, uh, with Ethernet connectors. So we use a, a, what's called a MagJack. That's a, uh, an Ethernet connector that has um, a built-in transformer inside it. Now, our, our supplier in China um, substituted uh, a part that didn't actually have this. It was just a bare, much simpler part, which, of course, wouldn't work with the chips we had. So that was one, that was one gotcha. We got our first batch of units back from the factory, and they worked perfectly apart from the network. Um, so that was a that was a big thing, but ultimately quite straightforward. Um, the other one was um, we've had to uh, uh, we've had to put this thing through CE marking through uh, uh, European uh, Union uh, consumer standards um, testing uh, earlier, I think, than we had expected. When we were expecting to sell these in a few a few thousand units to developers, uh, we, uh, we weren't intending to do that. We were intending to postpone that until the educational release. Once the uh, once the volumes grew into the tens of thousands and we saw the demographics of some of the people who were ordering these, it became very clear to everyone involved that, uh, that we need to, to, to do EM emissions testing. Uh, we, did that, uh, we did that two weeks ago and we were, we were extremely lucky in that the board sailed through testing with very few problems. But it was uh, maybe a tense few days. Are you hoping this will be a catalyst for a new generation of young creative computer programmers and what feedback have you had so far from users? 
we absolutely hope that there will be, just as I'm sitting here saying, if it wasn't for the BBC Micro, I wouldn't be uh, a computer programmer. Um, I'm very hopeful that um, uh, in 20 years' time, there will be somebody who will be, uh, there'll be somebody looking back on this and, um, and saying that Raspberry Pi got them into, got them into computing. So, so in that respect, yeah, I think there is, you know, that is our hope to kind of generate a new generation of, of, of engineers. Um, feedback so far has been very promising. Feedback from, we've had boards out with uh, a number of hot, people in the hobbyist community. Uh, they found it very useful. It is, after all, just a Linux PC. You know, it's, uh, it's a fairly straightforward piece of equipment to use. Um, so that feedback has been good. And then the feedback from small trials that we've done with schools has also been very, very positive. There is an increased demand for e-teaching aids. Will the Raspberry Pi model help solve that dilemma for education? And how does Raspberry Pi fit that niche? So that's, that's, very, that's an interesting question, because I don't think it is. Uh, I don't think that that was originally our intention. There are, two, there are two uses for computers in education. One is teaching about computers, and one is using computers to teach other things. And I think we have been very interested in the former and not at all focused on the, on the latter. But by doing a good job in producing a product for the former, we've, we've ended up with a platform which you can use for teaching. You know, this is a platform that you can look at courseware on, and you can browse the web on it. So any web-based um, any web-based courseware can potentially run on this device. Um, so yeah, we, we, we see that probably as a as a, as a valuable extra niche that we can go into outside the niche that we were originally uh, considering. And how was it received in Leeds? Can you tell us about the launch? So, and how it's going to be rolled out with other schools? So we went up to um, uh, we went up to Leeds last Friday, um, and we did a, a little session with some of the children of employees of L14 Premier Funnel, uh, one of our one of our two distributors. Uh, and it, it, was, it was just amazing to watch these kids um, uh, telling us what they wanted to, what they want. Many of them had ambitions to have written a particular piece of software. There was one, uh, there was one guy there who said he'd always wanted to write the, the effect from the matrix, where letters, green letters, fall down the screen. And we were able in two or three minutes to get that effect up and running on the machine. And it really kind of, I think, brought it home to him that it, this, was a, this was a platform that he could use uh, that was approachable. Uh, and so, so that was, every time we put this in front of children, have a better and better and better experience and that's really um, that sort of thing helps us keep going when, uh, <laughs> but when we encounter the occasional rough spot on the road you know, those kind of responses are really important to us. So how will Raspberry Pi help improve the computer science technical skills and knowledge of our future generations of youngsters? How will they be able to take this forward? We think it's very important to generate a new generation of, of engineers. It's important to get devices in front of children at the earliest possible age. So I think this is the contribution. Uh, our contribution is to produce a platform which is, um, uh, which is cheap and which is portable. And what that means is that uh, children can own these devices. You don't have to confine your experience with engineering to one or two hours a week in the curriculum. You can take this home and plug this into your television. Uh, and then you can do what I did, which is to spend three or four hours a night working on these things. So that's going to be, that, that's going to be the contribution, to, to give us a generation of people who at the age of 18 have sort of already spent 10 years um, programming for three or four hours a day. There are some pretty big names in Cambridge um, for computer history, so uh, how significant do you feel Raspberry Pi will contribute to that as well? Uh, we, hope, we hope to make a contribution. Uh, I think if you go back and you look at, um, certainly, suppose you just take something as, as uh, simplistic as sales, as a unit shipments, as a, um, a, as a guide. We have quite a mountain to climb, right? You have BBC devices sold between one and two million units. Um, I believe Sinclair Spectrum devices, which are um, which are a Cambridge product, I think sold in the region of five million devices. So I think we have a long way to go before we can claim our place in the, uh, you know, uh, the uh, as, as the king of the hill for that. But we just, you know, we just hope to make a contribution. Well, like I say, we hope that there will be one person who will look back in 20 years' time and, and say that they uh, that they got their start on the Raspberry Pi. And what next, Evan? What next after Raspberry Pi? Um, for me, um, I'm not sure I can see that far ahead. I think you, know, you, you get to a point where you're, you're, you've got your eyes down and you're just looking at the next week and the next month. Um, I, I very much hope to see Raspberry Pi um, uh, at least, you know, through, to, through to a stage where uh, it's in wide deployment and there's good support material around it. That's a big focus of the foundation right now is uh, producing the educational support material uh, that's required to get the most out of this platform. So that's kind of the, 
that, that's, that's what's next for me, you know, helping the foundation do more, do more of the same and do more of the two other things that I guess we've missed out on the way. Thank you.